good afternoon today we are going to discuss the surgical options or surgery surgical principles in the osteoporotic spine now the osteoporotic spine can present to you with just an instability a neuro deficit or a significantly associated kyphosis along with it in 2013 we did a study and published in the european spine journal discussing the surgical options in osteoporotic fractures in cases without neuro deficit and in cases with a significant neuro deficit and as you can see the options range from a plain simple vertebroplasty or a kyphoplasty to a moderately challenging procedure of a minimally invasive fixation addition uh, fixation addition to it to a significant column reconstruction surgeries where which involved an osteotomy to a mesh reconstruction of the anterior column or from a posterior surgery so i'm going to take you through all the options that we can do surgically and the principles associated with and the issues that we faced along with along the line so principally you need to reconstruct the anterior column and augment it with fixation devices wherever possible the anterior reconstruction might range from just a vertebroplasty or a kyphoplasty to either a column shortening osteotomy or a mesh reconstruction as well as discussed now options wise you have pedicle screws significantly available options where you can have these dual threaded screws which improve the improve the pull out strength of the uh, of the screw you have these fenestrated screw these fenestrations inside the pedicle screw a cannulated screw where you can push in cement thereby increasing the pull out strength you have this expandable pedicle screw which after putting in a plunger you can, the pedicle the mouth of the screw the tip of the screw will uh, expands and improves its hold and then you have this ha coated screw hydroxy apatite coated screw as well but traditional implants which take care of the strongest bone available in the osteoporotic spine name, namely the lamina are the sublaminar wires and the hard shell rectangle along with these pedicle hooks as well or laminar hooks as well so these are important modalities you mustn't forget about in pedicle screws you can also take advantage of the different trajectories available wherein this is a outwardly directed screw which is a cortical screw you can have a medially directed screw angulated screw to the superior cortex basically wherever there is a significant good hold in the superior part of the pedicle and in the cortical bone of the pedicle you take advantage of these different trajectories as well now patients with normal neurology in whom you are just going to do a vertebroplasty an important tip that we learned all the way along was to avoid overfilling of the cement even in this case as you can see the cement looks little bit significantly pushed so avoid overfilling of the cement and importantly medically treat the osteoporosis always and always this is a patient with a normal neurology with a conus or cord compression she didn't have significant neurology but just instability back pain and needed support for walking now whenever in these borderline cases you feel little bit hesitant just to do a just to do a plain vertebroplasty so we devised a surgery sort of a mini open or minimally invasive uh, decompression along with an open vertebroplasty so you negate some of the effects of that fear that you have with what's going to happen if the middle column just gets pushed behind onto the cord in getting a neurologist to patient who previously didn't have any neurology and it gives good results but importantly you need to avoid it when there is a significant kyphosis because you just can't do it in a kyphosis surgery whenever there is a gross segmental instability or three column instability where the posterior column is stretched out along with an anterior anterior column deficit where you have destroyed end plates or the disc space is affected as in this case as you can see the disc plate it's it's a paper wafer thin bone along with adjacent disc plate issue and obviously where you can just get away with a particular percutaneous vertebroplasty in today's age i would just add an pedicle screw fixation either and to an open surgery or to the mis we preferably especially if it's a junctional fracture like a thoracolumbar injury we would add a, a, a pedicle screw insertion one level above one level below and preferably a small screw in the same level 
along with the anterior reconstruction with the vertebroplasty. Now osteoporotic fractures with neurology becomes a different beast altogether where you have to have all the surgical experience and of different procedures of osteotomy and anterior reconstruction of the column from a posterior approach. Now the principles remain the same. You have to decompress the spinal cord and you have to stabilize it a little bit longer than you would do routinely. So the, in this case, one above, one below or two above, two below just won't do. do. So you make sure you make sure you instrument the spinal column a little bit longer and wherever possible augment your fixation as well. Now to reconstruct the column, we, we, we encountered two types of vertebral instability and the reconstruction, anterior column reconstruction differed if you have an intervertebral instability or an intravertebral instability. Now, in intravertebral instability, the non-union as you can see is restricted inside the vertebra only. Okay, so we have a thin shell of bone surrounding the non-union. Whereas in an intervertebral instability, you have the fractures which were either close to the superior or the inferior end plate and the end plate just gave away, giving rise to a intervertebral instability. So this is an intravertebral instability, wherein the principle of reconstruction remains is to just fill the cavity either by a cement or a, or any cage, a tea leaf cage also uh, uh, can be inserted into the cavity or you just close the cavity surgically. So a parotic fracture with, with neurology, with intravertebral type of instability, but without kyphosis can be treated like this way. So a case, for example, significant stenosis with an osteoporotic vertebral fracture, this needed a decompression and stabilization along with a vertebroplasty. Now mind you, the use of these cemented screws was done where you, where you inject the, make a track, inject the cement along the track and you can just use the dual threaded screws as our sponsors have it. Uh, today's sponsor of the meeting have it. Or you can use what was earlier shown as a fenestrated screws where you can insert the screws which has fenestrations at two, three fenestrations at the tip of the screw. Where in, and after putting the screw, you can just emit, uh, insert cement so that this part becomes solid and the pedicle screw has a good hold over this area. So, uh, uh, augmented uh, cement augmented pedicle screws along with the vertebroplasty and a decompression is an option in this case. Something similar again old heel fracture with cord compression along with a new fracture again a similar cement augmentation with vertebroplasty again column reconstruction was done. Another case wherein you had a intravertebral instability in neurology with kyphosis, the option remains to reconstruct the column with a pedicle subtraction osteotomy. A huge yawning gap which was seen anteriorly once you position the patient, once you take down the pedicle, pedicles on both the sides and compress the column, the gap actually closes. So either you can close in the gap or you can fill in a bone graft or a, or a titanium or a peak spacer inside just like as you would do for a transforaminal lumbar interbody fusion surgery, your T-lift cage can be inserted into the gap. The whole idea is to fill in the gap anteriorly, either by cement, either by compressing the column or use of cages. Now, wherever you don't have pedicle screw, it's not like it, you need to have pedicle screw. Actually, the best implant for, for osteoporotic spines, everybody would agree, is a hard shield rectangle, sublaminar wires and a hard shield rectangle, which will really save you the day wherein if the bone is significantly osteoporotic, your screws are just pulling out, it's like mushy bone, then you can take take uh, take help of this sublaminar wire fixation along with hard shell rectangle as well. So you have a traditional option available as well wherein your screws just won't uh, give you that confidence of fixation. Now coming to the intervertebral instability where the instability is very close to the disc space or the fracture is very close to the either the superior disc space or the inferior disc space, the end plate fractures fall in this category where over a period of time they get into kyphosis, the end plate ruptures, then you land up with the kyphosis along with the middle column uh, uh, pressing onto the spinal cord leading to neurology. 
And in this intervertebral sort of scenarios, you need to take down, remove the disc, remove the discs along with the bony shell, which is remaining, reconstruct the anterior column with a cage and then augment posteriorly significantly longer. So as discussed, you need to reconstruct the anterior column and your window, your gateway becomes a transpedicular approach for most of these cases. Take down the pedicles on either side, make sure you have significant space, take help of an expandable cages, where the, uh, cages wherever possible. And depending on the size of the defect that you leave behind in reconstructing, reconstruct the anterior column. So case in point, again, a patient wherein the end plate was breached, then you'll have to take down significant amount of the end plate as well as the disc and reconstruct the anterior column by putting in a, by putting in a mesh cage in. Again, something similar case for a second reconstruction of the anterior column. So to summarize, you need to reconstruct the anterior column either by a cement, either by a spacer or a mesh cage or closing down the column. Have fixation modalities, either traditional hard shell rectangle or pedicle screws, augment the pedicle screws, use more than one modality of fixation or multiple fixation points when you are going to fix posteriorly. Whenever in doubt, go longer in osteoporotic spine and have more than one fixation modalities. What I personally, my personal choice is, I try to either cement at the ends, use cemented screws at the ends, or use such sort of a construct where you have wires either at one level or two levels, either superiorly, inferiorly, or at both the places, because that's where the construct is going to fail in an osteoporotic spine. You will have to proximal or distal pull out. And if you can protect that, that lev those levels, then, then you'll have good results. Now, all of this is going to fail, and we have all have had failures with this, if the osteoporosis is not treated or there's a severe grade of osteoporosis. So the osteoporosis treatment is medical therapy only. So take home, there are different options that you just saw from a plain simple vertebral plasty to a mini open procedure to a significant trans to significantly uh, large procedures like a transplantary decompression and reconstruction of the anterior column. So if at all I have to take, take tell you some take home messages is going to be don't have significant cement insertion in your plain vertebroplasty patients as well. The posterior surgery is, uh, is the important benchmark for this thing, but with an anterior support, try to reconstruct the anterior column, prefer multiple fixation modalities like use of sublaminar wires, use of cement augmented screws. That's going to prevent pull out of the screws. And importantly, significantly importantly, treat the osteoporosis as well. Thank you.